So Fergus McFadden, um, we hear about you know rugby selections, this, that and the other, but I think everyone is still really consumed by the election drama. I'd say probably even yourselves here in Leinster this morning. Yeah, between that and Storm Kira, there's been a lot going on, so a few distractions, but uh, yeah, training's going ahead today and uh, we're just looking forward to um, a, a rugby week where there's actually a game at the end of it because there's obviously been a few weeks now where we've just been training with uh, no game to look forward to, so... One thing, we have that game next weekend, but obviously I assume it would have added a good feeling in the camp as well that the Ireland camp in particular, I know obviously you've big experienced this yourself, doing well, does that give you guys a bounce as well? Definitely, and we got a couple of the guys back that had their first experiences there. Max Deegan and uh, Ronan Keller have come back in. So uh, we're all delighted for them with getting their first caps and, and, and playing well. So just seeing those guys getting rewarded after what they had done with Leinster for the first part of the season was kind of great for the whole group. Is it a bit odd for yourself? Are you at the stage now that you can kind of remove yourself from watching Ireland as, I suppose, nearly as a fan or with information, obviously? Or do you still look at it and go, oh, geez, I could give something there still? Uh, I think I'll probably kind of remove myself, really. Um, I haven't been, you know, getting picked in the squads for probably over a year now. So uh, my main focus has just been Leinster. And uh, that's been kind of a good thing. Um, but... Uh, of course, obviously, I, I, I miss putting on the green jersey, but um, you know I'm excited for the younger guys that are there because they're bringing forward now under this new coaching ticket with Andy Farrell. That said, though, I can only imagine I'm putting myself in your shoes. I'm not sure I'd like it. I, I'd be selfish, maybe. I don't know. I'd be thinking, like, I'd find it quite difficult to switch off. So that's actually quite commendable that you found a way to switch off. How did you do that? Yeah, it probably wasn't the easiest initially, to be honest, because uh, it would have been pretty raw not getting picked and feeling that maybe I should have. But, um, you know, I had a great run with Ireland um, and the opportunities I got were great ones. And uh, under particularly Joe Schmidt, I um, was lucky enough to be in some squads where we won some trophies. So, uh, I mean, it's just about a new batch of players, new new bunch of guys now. You know, I'm, I'm in, one, in that older bracket now. So uh, those younger guys are taking it forward. You know, you can see how well the likes of uh, uh, Andrew Conway, Stockdale and um, and particularly Jordan Larmer, I thought was outstanding in the last couple of games. So um, they look like they've got a good, good um, back three unit there. And I'd imagine the last few weekends as well, would give them that boost they need because I can only imagine that kind of camp and obviously you weren't involved in it but still tangentially you would have known them obviously it must have taken them a long time to recover from that bruising World Cup experience to come back the way they have Yeah I think it was probably um, I wasn't in there but I'd say it was probably easier because there was new coaches involved and I know Andy was there but he wasn't there as a head coach and then obviously you've got Mike Cat coming in so they're putting their new touches on it and they seem to be doing uh, things a lot different so uh, that freshens th things up for guys and it also the guys that have in, been in there previously even the likes of you know Johnny Sexton Peter O'Mahony Conor Murray you know stalwarts of the Irish team are probably looking going you know I have to really play my best to get in this side because there's so many young guys playing well as well you use the word stalwarts. Let's focus on Leinster. You're very much a Leinster stalwart. You've been, no more than myself, an elder statesman. You've been around for a while and you still have something to give. Like you're always in the mix if you're not injured or whatever. What do you think it has you have that Leo Cullen still looks at and goes, yeah, he has it? Um, I think my body is still in a good place, thankfully, uh, for the age I'm at. Um, and I think just under Stuart and Leo's training regime, uh, you know, if, if you're training every day and every week under these guys, you're going to be improving. And I feel I have been even at my age. And on top of that, the younger guys that are all playing so well, um, they push you on as an older guy because you're saying, listen, if I get left behind, I'm not going to get a game. So um, I'm hoping I get an opportunity to uh, put my hand up and play this week. Am I right in saying you're what, 33, 34? Is that right? 33, yeah. You're hardly 95 now. I'm hardly 95, but I mean, in the, the the demographic of age demographic of squads these days, that's certainly older, you know, for my position anyway, for back three. So you've got Rob Carney, who's so experienced as well, um, who's the same age, but then the likes of Scott Fardy is a bit older, he's 36. So um, it's important to have um, a good balance of older and younger guys, because at the end of the day, the younger guys have, have had seen such success since they've come into the squad but you do definitely need a few older heads around and um, for that experience and do you find as well maybe as you've gotten that bit older and you're gaining the experience you might have learned ways to play to you can't avoid injury but to recover better for a start or maybe to make sure you don't get into those positions to begin with a bit of match smarts that you pick up that you didn't have in your 20s yeah i think so um 
I think it's more off the pitch stuff. I think you can't change the way you play. You know, you, if you, if you have a uh, a USB, um, uh, you know, in a particular style of play that you have, and I think I do have one as a winger. Um, I'm not going to change that once I'm on the field, but it's in and around that where I've probably managed myself better. You know, with my recovery when we're not training and maybe adjusting certain things I do in the gym. And we've got such good strength and conditioning guys and physios in Leinster that they realise that when you get a bit older, you probably need to tweak things to make sure that you're getting all the uh, pitch sessions in. And it's a big worry as well for athletes who've been so many miles on the clock. There is always that worry, isn't there, that if I don't show up for training today or if I say I actually need a day more to recover because I'm a little bit older, the tendons take a bit longer, that there's a niggle as well, oh, I want to be there for fear they miss me. Definitely, and I think... To be honest with you, I found the older you get, if you get a bit of time off, um, you can actually go backwards very quickly. Um, I, I find I actually find training every day, um, and getting that stimulation is 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 definitely good for the body. So um, thankfully, I've I've managed to stay fit for most part of this season, bar picking up an elbow injury at the start. So um, you know, hopefully, I can just remain to stay fit and and keep fighting for my place to get in the team. Something that you can see with the Leinster squad, obviously it's so deep, which means everyone has to fight. There's a great calibre of players there for Leo and Stewart to be pulling from, which is great for fans, great for the team, possibly not so great for people who want to make the team. But the one thing I notice is that you guys all still enjoy it, even when they're not being selected. That's hard to do. Yeah, but I think, you know, we've built a good culture in Leinster at the moment. And, you know, um, w- one of the, the um, lines we go by is, you know, um, you earn earn the jersey, but you know once you have it, you don't own it. So um, you know once you get it, you you have to um, uh, play very well to try and keep it and and try and maintain the standard that the guy before you um, um, placed when when he had it on. So uh, yeah, I mean as you said, all those younger guys that have got their opportunities have done so well, and it's it's great for the coaching staff because they've got so many quality players to pick from. But it can be tough um, as a player because. Um, to get game after game, um, you know, it's it's tough to get repeated game time because the coaching staff are very good at rotating and, and keeping guys fresh. And then the repeated game time, like you said, that works wonders for some players and not for others. But for you yourself in particular at this stage in your career, I'd say you still like to be in the thick of it, even when it might take a bit longer to recover. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think most players will say, you know, they... they are playing their best rugby when they've probably played, you know, three or four or five games in a row. Um, but you don't always have that novelty playing for Leinster. But I think, as I said, going back to my original point about the way training has been set up, we train at a very high intensity. So I'd like to think that most guys are ready uh, to perform at a high level when they do get their chance. And now, obviously, you've got all the players back, more or less, and you're looking forward, like you said, it's great to be training toward a game. And unfortunately, I suppose in one sense for you guys, everybody expects you to keep winning now. Does that bring a pressure? Yeah, the, the, I mean, the winning thing is is has been something we said at the start of the year. Obviously, we want to try and win every game we play, but, uh, you know, the Pro 14 is so competitive now, and not to mention, you know, how competitive the Champions Cup is. So yeah, There's um, a big difference between the two, even with levels of competitiveness, I feel. The, 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 there probably is, but at the same time, the Pro 14 has grown an awful lot. And the two conferences, there's like any team can beat another on their given day, depending on, on the people who are picked. So um, we're not taking any game for granted. And uh, this is just another opportunity for us to get out in front of our home fans and try to put on a big performance.